Anne Jeffries as Marion Kirby, the ghostess with the mostest. Robert Sterling as George Kirby, that most sportive spirit. And Leo G. Carroll, host to said ghost as... Topper. Uh, you remember that uh, oil exploration at the bank finance in Canada? It came up dry. <laughs> oh, dear. I was hoping to get a new car this year, but after this, <laughs> it wouldn't look very good to the board of directors, would it? Oh, then I have news for you that ought to cheer you up, Mr. Scarlett. Mm -hmm. You remember that expedition I financed for uh, Professor Sletkin last year? Yes. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, yes, uh, to explore the Valley of the Lower Nile in Egypt. Uh, you handled the deal while I was in Chicago. Oh, that's right. He went to Egypt to look for the eggs of the dodo bird. Yes. Dodo bird? Uh, now extinct. The last dodo died in 1861. And uh, and uh, you spent the bank's money for a dodo egg omelet, huh? Mm -hmm. But they're very rare. Uh, they only laid one egg a year. It was a big egg and... Uh, Topper. No dodo ever laid an egg as big as you have. <laughs> Carla, please, please do let me finish. Dr. Slatkin didn't find any eggs. But while he was digging around, he made one of the most fabulous strikes of the century. Uh, gold? Better than gold. Oil? Better than oil. Uranium? Nephitanium. Nephitanium? Think of it, nephitanium. I put up the money. I, I'm entitled to half the profits. Oh, well, uh, yes. yes. Uh, 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 Topper, I'm a, I'm a little rusty on uh, nuclear physics. Uh, is that better than uranium? Well, you can't even evaluate it in terms of money. Mm. <laughs> Who can't? <laughs> Uh, Miss Hammond, uh, call that uh, used car dealer and cancel the order for the second-hand station wagon. Nephitanium is the name of an Egyptian mummy. <laughs> it's here in this sarcophagus. A 6,000-year-old mummy. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, you take care of this. Mummy! Uh, it's from the Sixth Dynasty, much older than King Tut. And you advance the professor $10,000, and all you have to show for it is this dead issue, this uh, dried-up mummy. Well, we can sell it to a museum. It's worth $30,000. Who said so? He did. Professor Slatkin. Now you get it out of here. Why, it, it might even have a curse on it. Oh, that's uh, just uh, Sunday supplement fiction. I'll bet that... Mummy is what soured my Canadian oil deal. <laughs> I'll put it in the vault. It's nice and cool down there. What? Put a mummy's curse on four million dollars? Topper, are you trying to give me a heart attack? You take it home with you. If there's any curse, let it be on you. Where did you come from? I was listening. Now stand back, Topper. Don't go near it. Skylar's right. There may be a curse on it. Well, I'm not superstitious. Huh. Remember what happened to the man who opened King Tut's tomb? Well, what happened to him? What happened to him? Twenty-six years later, he died in his sleep at the age of only 105. <laughs> well, I can cuss better than that, and frankly, I feel like it. Topper, I'll take over now. <clears throat> if I'm not mistaken, this is an authentic sarcophagus of King Nefertanium the Great. <laughs> and I'm not mistaken. Ah. Here's his fiddle case. He was an accomplished violinist. Well, that's a mummy case. Oh, well, only a trained eye could tell the difference. He played a big fiddle. Not as hot as Nero, but good. <laughs> now, I'd like to call your attention to the fact that, unlike ordinary mummies, King Nefertanium's face and figure were not reproduced on the case. You see, it's perfectly plain. 
That's because... I think because you're holding it backwards. Oh. Like most musicians, the king was thin, undernourished, aesthetic. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Laugh. <laughs> so I made a mistake. Don't you realize that the world's greatest discoveries have come out of mistakes? But well, take Columbus. He thought he'd discovered India, but it was America. And now I have blundered onto a discovery of inestimable historical significance. Oh? What? The female figure hasn't changed in 6,000 years. <laughs> If you really want to find out whether this thing has a curse on it or not, you'll just have to let George handle it his own way. Well, where is he? I'm in here, old man. <laughs> you see, these Egyptians uh, worship the cat god, Bubathus. So if this thing is really authentic, there should be a mummified kitty in there somewhere. But why do they have to be buried with cats? Why not? We were buried with a dog. That's part of the course. Look! Here it is. What would I tell you? Now, wonder what else they have here. <laughs> Neil, come back here. Well, it would help if I could translate these hieroglyphics. What's the first word, Topper? Word? It's a picture. Well, act it out for me. Hmm? <laughs> now, uh, what could that represent? It's like a waiter serving hot pastrami. Well, that's what it looks like to me. That's what I get for marrying a delicatessen clerk. <laughs> uh, Henrietta, is Topper here? Is he all right? Oh, how nice of you to say that, Mr. Skyler. Not many people ask if Cosmo is all right. They always ask if he's all there. <laughs> i do the next one, Topper. Now the next word. Now the next. Just uh, practicing a new dance step, the Egyptian mambo. Good heavens. The gods would destroy, they first make mad. Topper. I'm terribly sorry for the way I behaved in the office. I, I can't have this curse fall on you. Oh, you can relax, Copper. I just remembered something. Only Egyptian kings had curses on their tombs. Uh, the women weren't important enough. Well, I like that. Uh, don't worry, Mr. Skyler. Only the Egyptian kings had curses on their tombs. This one is female. Nothing could happen to anyone connected with this mummy. Is that so? Dapper, they just found Professor Slatkin's body in the East River. It's good to see you. <laughs> uh, weren't you expecting to? Of course, of course. 
<coughs> Nothing happened uh, yet? No, no. Uh, well, it's uh, only ten o'clock. Uh, uh, didn't you even uh, touch yourself shaving? No. <clears throat> Have you seen the morning paper? Oh, you mean about uh, Professor Slatkin's uh, accident? Uh, oh, it wasn't an accident, Topper. Oh, no. Oh, just listen to this. <clears throat> it is reported that Professor Slatkin was strangled by a silk cord before being dropped into the river. <clears throat> Uh, yes. Uh, authoritative sources reveal that the method of assassination is peculiar to an Egyptian cult which has sworn to recover the mummy of Princess Nerfatenia. Uh, did you say strangled by a silk cord? Why, what's the matter, Topper? Oh, oh no, uh, nothing, nothing. Mm. I Henry Henrietta wouldn't buy me such tight collars. Mm. <laughs> the assassins are identified by a snake. The sign of Cleopatra's asp, which is tattooed on their wrist. Topper, the sooner we sell that mummy, the better. I'm going to call Dr. Hassan, the Egyptologist, at once. Dr. Hassan, resident? Yes. One moment. Please, for you, Master. Thank you, Amit. Hello? Oh, yes, Mr. Schuyler. What? You have the mummy? Oh, Mr. Cosmo Topper has it. In his home. Indeed, I am interested. There are certain people who would pay a great price for it. Yes, I should like to take possession of it before they do. I would be very happy to take it off your hands, if the price is right. True. You see, the curse on that mummy increases its market value. When may I inspect it? Fine. I will be at Mr. Topper's home at 8 tonight. Thank you. Goodbye. Prodecy the Hedimomi. Munabi Sihadi, Professor Slatkin, Garot. Mur di Canepisali, Princess Nafaterium, Garot, Cosmotopper, tonight. Prodecy? Ah. Yes, indeed. I fear Dr. Hassan is more of a romanticist than a businessman. Topper, I wouldn't want anything in the world to happen to you. But if it's going to, I hope it happens before I close this deal. <laughs> well, you look as if you just crept out of a crypt. <laughs> Topper, so far I haven't been able to break this code. Oh, have you tried the Berlitz School? Speak hieroglyphics in ten easy lessons? All right. Topper, I've decided to do this the easy way. I'm going back into the ghost world and look up this princess. Where's Marion? Oh, don't mention this to Marion. You see, I may have to visit the princess in her, uh, <clears throat> boudoir. Oh, the things <laughs> I do for you, old man. Is Neil going with you? Yeah, he's going back and look for that cat. Hey, 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 stop that. Well, if I want to locate the princess, I have to know what she looks like, don't I? <sighs> Say, Johnson and Johnson have been in the business a lot longer than I thought. <laughs> Hassan was supposed to be here today. Must be tied up. Hi, Toppy. Marion, Marion, look at him. We've got to get the mummy away from him. Okay, Toppy. Which one is the mummy? <laughs> Topper, give me a hand with it, will you? Yep. <laughs> Look what I unraveled. Wow, wee. 
I, I always thought Marion had nice looking legs, but uh, though <laughs> they make Marion look like pipe stems. <laughs> Honey, where have you been these past six thousand years? Uh, <laughs> now, here's one ghost that would be a pleasure to contact. Uh, so she doesn't contact you first. <laughs> Brunette. Marion doesn't know this, but I've always been a sucker for brunettes. There's one I'll never forget. He was the bridesmaid at our wedding. Don't bother me, Neil. Oh, I I've got to have just one little peek. <laughs> Lock on the inside. Right here, Hanesi, Princess Nafantanium. We're done a Konosi Garot, Cosmo Topic. What is it, Marion? I thought I saw someone out there. Oh, nonsense. He's done a Konosi, Dr. Hudson. Tightly. I tell you, I did see someone out there hiding behind the bush. Where? I can't see anyone. Hmm. Looks like Egyptian to me. Oh, that must be Dr. Hassan. Excuse me. Oh, uh, Dr. Hassan, you came to the wrong door. This is the patio entrance. Um, by the way, I'm Cosmo Topper. Cosmo Topper? Uh, what happens? Uh, you are Dr. Hassan. To be sure. And I do not blame you in the least for being apprehensive with an assassin in the neighborhood trying to recover the mummy. Oh, oh come, come. You don't believe all that rot, do you? Surely. Oh, oh, well, in that case, we'd better get inside the house. By the way, I haven't met this gentleman before. You will. <laughs> Good it. First, we must see Princess Nafatinium. Quick me. Right this way, gentlemen. The mummy. Precisely. The Princess Nepotanium. Who's that is? Hey, Papa. Come here quick. Now, about this cult that's trying to recover the mummy. Uh, the papers say that they've sworn to kill whoever has it in his possession. Uh, do you suppose that's true? Come here, Papa. Excuse me. You know what these hieroglyphics say? What? Pharaoh the Great won the third chariot race at Pyramid Park, paying two shekels. Oh, this thing is a fake. Will you two please get out of here? These gentlemen have some business with me. And the sooner we get to it, the happier I'll be. Well, I guess we know when we're not wanted. Well, what do you want us to do? Well, if you must do something, go outside and watch for an Egyptian killer. There may be one lurking around the house. Killer? Come on, Mary. Oh, now, uh, where were we? Oh, yes, uh, I understand the assassins wear tattoo marks on their wrists. Like this? Uh, yes, yes, well, that ought not to be too difficult to recognize. And they, uh, they strangle their victims with a silken cord. Like this? Assassin! George, Marion! Oh, oh, pardon me, the doorbell. Yes, yes, no problem. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry I'm late, Topper. Ah, this is uh, Dr. Hassan, I presume. Uh, I am uh, Mr. Schuyler, the legal owner of the mummy. What happened? Mr. Schuyler, I wouldn't say that if I were you. Oh, tut, tut, Topper. All you did was to authorize the Egyptian expedition when I was absent. Now, that mummy belongs to me, and I'm here to see that I get everything that's coming to me. Mr. Schuyler, stop kicking me, Topper. Then you are the possessor of the mummy? I am. And I want to warn you, I'm not as soft as Topper. Anything that you plan to give him, I want double. <laughs> I want everything that can be wrung out of this deal. <laughs> now. <laughs> Topper. The tattoo. The silk cord. The end. <laughs> Look, Topper. We caught the assassin. He was sneaking around the house. George, see him up for you. Dr. Hassan, 
Морние карапа сатриды бомбли не видят, Турапа сатриды станции черный, Муннафы, Кольдеви, Уравны, Эклабары, Мурканы, Сыпы, не видят. Парокелы. Кроме сиды карап? Кали. А, Мурипис, Латри, Горна. Ты вот так, Кали. You got the wrong men. These are the killers. It was all my fault. Oh, don't worry about it, Topper. Don't worry at all, Topper. We'll take charge. Be kind of it. Topper, fuck. I cannot bear to look. Grab his hands, George. Twist it around his neck. The surgeon was Topper is making hurt my ears. No, 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 you idiot, the topper. After them, Neil. We may need these. <laughs> there they are, Papa. Rack for delivery to the jail. Papa, how did you do it so fast? What? Oh, that's just a little trick I learned from my mummy. Oh, hi. <laughs> W. Lupton, Bernard L. Schubert production. Produced by John W. Lupton. Starring Anne Jeffries, Robert Sterling, and Leo G. Carroll.